joined me here today on our brain hacking experience is the one and only Sean McGuire. Hey, Sean, how are you? I'm good, mate. How you doing? I'm fantastic, thanks. So a lot of people wouldn't know, we know each other, I'm going to say 20 years now, at least at this stage. We're great friends. I'd say what, so, yeah. What part of the world do you find yourself in right now? Uh, we are currently in the West Indies. Um, my wife and my children and I, uh, well, my wife and I decided that, uh, you know, with the upcoming election and COVID and Christmas and Thanksgiving, that we knew that things were going to get a lot worse before they got better. So we decided with our kids being so young and them not having to do online schooling that we would just run away. So we have a friend who lives down in the West Indies and they said there's no, there's no COVID there or very, very little. So we just kind of packed up and ran away and uh it's uh it's been very nice brilliant i love that just running away to like a, a little treasure island in the middle of nowhere tell me this tell me this like straight away i have to know because me and you like we like to have the odd little tipple when we're out what's the local drink out there like is there a local beer or local rum or you know is there anything that you found out the there local like? the, the local beer is wadadli and it is pronounced wadadli <laughs> wadadli dad lee Okay. It's very good. It's very good. I recommend it. And uh, English Harbour rum is very good. Is All very right. Good. All right. So if, you, if, you're, if you're in the neighbourhood, try it. Try a Dudley and an English Harbour rum, preferably one after the other. I think, unfortunately, it's going to be a while before I get out into the neighbourhood, as you put it. Um, but I did notice. I did notice because we haven't been talking in a while that you finally got the Players Conservatory up and running. So tell everybody what the Players Conservatory is and where they can also find it. Uh, well, first of all, it, it, it's on Zoom, just like as we are chatting now and as, as, as we are interacting, we, we basically use that principle. And my idea was I wanted, I've been asked by lots of young actors over the 40 years I've been doing this, how do you get into it? How do you find an agent? How do you? And I wanted to create something to help other young people, young actors, or not even young, just people that have never had the opportunity to act. I wanted to give them that chance. And I wanted to do it with just teachers that are professionals, no professors that have never set foot on a stage. It's all working people in their profession. And I really, I called it the conservatory because it's not just gonna be for acting this uh, weekend on, on Instagram live or, or it would have been, it's already gone for us now. But uh, yeah. uh, we introduced Emma Hetherington as a, um, a best-selling novelist who's gonna do a creative writing course. And th then we had Alton Conlon begin a singer songwriter course. So it's really growing and we've got students from sort of 25, 26 countries around the world. And it's, wow. it's just been really exciting to, to use this space and use lockdown to sort of start doing something new. And it's just, it's been really fantastic. So I'm thrilled with it. Is this something that you're going to continue doing? Oh, I, listen, it's absolutely fine. There's kids running in and out of everybody's Zoom calls. There's dogs, cats, everything. I've got my own kids running around in the background over there. <laughs> Who's that in that's, the background That's there? My, my own little bit of... That's Leo, Leo, and and then just like magic, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> yes, yeah. we are. We are. We are continuing. That the whole, whole idea of the school is we want to expand all over the world. As I say, we've got students from from so many different places. The the plan in the future when COVID lifts is um, to have five, ten, fifteen schools in different places around the world uh, to actors actually teaching young actors, professional actors wow. that you see on screen and stage, will be teaching and imparting what they've learned along their journey uh, of being professional actors to young people coming through. So it's a, it's a really nice idea. And um, and when we when COVID lifts, uh, we hope to do it uh, physically in classrooms with, with a bunch of students in major cities around the world, London, New York, Paris, Milan, and so on. So it's and really exciting. I'm, I'm thrilled with it. I know you mentioned that you're collaborating with people like Alton and so on, but is the Players Conservatory just you? <laughs> Or is it you and a partner and a body of people? Or are you the, the main person in the Players Conservatory and then everybody else you bring on board as required? Uh, the, the, the reason that my name is not in the title is because I'm just the guy who started it. I really want it right. to be much more um, far and wide than me. My, I've got five or six actors that most people know who are, who are well-known, famous actors who have agreed that they're also going to take the course. And the idea is just that it grows and grows and grows in the fact that, <clears throat> you know, you can take a six week course with an actor that you've been watching on TV for years, which is a very rare thing. You don't often yeah. get to do that. And then you might find if that actor is now going off to do a movie or something, you may move to another actor's class or you may decide, actually, I want to try and take the songwriting class. So 
it's 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 you can move around it's sort of the idea is like an institute for all creative things we're gonna have a director's course soon um a, a painter's course it's really if you're an artistic person and you live out in the country you live far away as long as you've got uh, you're very artistic a magic person. course a magic course <laughs> well if, if you do it you know we'd have you it's just you're a pretty busy of course man. i'll do it know, but yeah I, if anybody uh, ever wanted to learn magic, who would they go to other than you? So this is the idea. It's about sort of a sort of giving back. If you're in your position in your career, you've been around the block, you know a lot. Who better to teach a young illusionist mentalist um, than somebody who's done it all? So I, I, that's the theory that we want young people and not just young, anybody that is interested in one of these arts to be taught by somebody who gives them exactly the truth, no BS, just this is really how it is in the real world, uh, which I think sometimes you don't get in maybe a drama school or a university or something. Uh, this is kind of much more the, the hard facts and, and to impart what we know really quickly. Well, it's interesting you mentioned drama school there. So look, if we were just to cut to the chase <laughs> right now, and if you were talking to a young actor will say from London or Dublin and Ireland or perhaps in Bangladesh, what would be the number one piece of advice you would give for today's world? It's very different now than what it was for me when I was starting out or you when you were starting out. So like somebody, raw talent, who just wants to get into acting, what would the number one piece of advice that you could think off the top of your head? Well, given the current situation, meaning that you can't go to bookshops, you can't go to acting workshops in, in person, you can't really do much physically, regardless of where you are, uh, we have the ultimate resource right here. We have the internet, and we can watch all of the 100 AFI's uh, top 100 films, the American Film Institute. We have yep. a plethora of the greatest writers in the world just sitting on digital shelves waiting for you to pull a... Anton Chekhov's The Seagull or Three Sisters or Shakespeare. You know, there's so many things you can do to start opening your mind up to something you do. To, to all of this great art, there's so much fantastic literature, plays, poems, and classic movies that so many people of our age even, and certainly younger, haven't seen. So the first thing is immerse yourself in brilliance and fall yeah. in love with perfection in acting. And, and that, that's a great place to start, I think. Okay, with that, two hot fire quick questions. What is your favorite classical movie of all time? The first film that popped into my head is It's a Wonderful Life. I'm not sure oh, if yeah. it's my absolute favorite, but. I often say if aliens came down and they said we're going to kill you all and take your planet, unless you can prove your humanity to us, I would say sit down and watch It's a Wonderful Life. Because right, I think it, it shows the best go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, just that. I would, I would say It's a Wonderful Life because it sort of shows the best of humankind, our kindness, oh, when best. we love, when we... Yeah. So Got I, it. I would say now, that. Here's a question that I've never asked you. I never even thought to ask you this because the, the Brain Hacker series that I'm putting together is just like random questions that come into my mind for people that I, I hugely admire. So what do you think of method acting? That's a very good question. I, I think method acting exists um, because acting had taken itself to a certain level and there were hungry, creative people uh, the, I mean, look, Lee Strasberg, uh, Samford Meisner, Stella Adler, uh, th these, these new people, a lot of it kind of came from Russia. They decided uh, or they sort of evolved the process. And so method acting can be confusing. Some people think, oh, you just have to live as the person all the time, which is not strict. I mean, someone like Daniel Day-Lewis would do that. And that's yeah. why Daniel Day-Lewis always gave performances that were sort of second to none. But I think for young actors starting out, I teach um, about the craft, about the method, uh, but these are things to use when you don't naturally, instinctively know how to play something. You don't actually have to live and breathe as that person. Um, that's, that's only a very few specific type of people, but there's different degrees of, of method. You know, yeah. there's, there's completely living it as the character, and then there's just applying some of the techniques that we can, we can use to sharpen the knowledge of the character. Sure thing. I'm just talking two minutes, one second. Um, so, uh, sorry. He's just no, no, this is the world here. we all live in now, juggling parenting. I, I, I make no bones about it here. I'm going to give him, which I never do unless we're on a plane, uh, 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 my phone to watch 
these children on the internet that just talk about toys all the time. There you go. Well, well I, I tell you, I solve this problem. I've got like ten minutes. <laughs> you're 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 a better man than the rest of us if you don't give them the phone every day. Because my kids are getting it every day at the moment. Because I've got to be out here working all day long. So listen. With that being said, you know I'm a brain hacker. You know I love magic. So yeah. I I think it is time for me to perform something very quick on you. So Sean, I. I have a deck okay. of cards here, Sean, and I'm purposely hiding this sticker here. Okay, I'm purposely hiding the sticker. You'll understand what the sticker is about in just a moment. But look, if I was to ask you to name any playing card at all in a deck of cards, just go ahead and name any card you want out loud. The Three of Hearts. The Three of Hearts. Now, I was covering the sticker here for a reason because this is the amount um, that I paid for the deck of cards. I'm going to bring it right up to the camera here. So you can see, I don't know if you can see that there, I paid exactly 14 cent for the deck of cards. Can you see that? Yeah, that's a good bargain. Yeah, it was a second hand 14 cent, I see. Now, but the reason I was covering it up is because we're going to use that as a number now. And the number we're obviously going to use is the number 14 because there's 52 deck or cards in a deck. Okay, so once again, there's 52 cards in a deck. We're going to count down to the 14th card. Okay, so that's one. This is two. That's three. This is four, that's five, six, seven. This is eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now you can see the 14th card is slightly uh, different uh, than the rest, Sean. And here's the crazy thing. You named the three of hearts, correct? Hit. And Sean, the only red back card is the three of hearts. It's but here's what's even, here's what's even more interesting about it, Sean. The weird thing no... is I didn't even come to that first. I thought of something else and moved on to that. So that's what, that, that sort of blows my head a little bit. But it really is the only red back card. It really is the only card at the 14th position. But not only that, Sean, it's the only card that ever existed. Ah, uh, <laughs> I see now why they were 14 cents. They had no print yeah, on them. Exactly. Yeah, they're not even printed yet. <laughs> That's exactly why they were 14 cent. You're not wrong. So, Sean, bravo, a couple more, bravo. Couple more questions. It still mystifies me how you do this. A few more questions before you go. Tell me this. I, like, since a kid, I am obsessed with examining the psychology behind conspiracy theories. And like, I love cryptozoology. Ah. I love cryptozoology as well. So, I love looking at like the Loch Ness monster. Bigfoot. What is your broad stroke overview of like conspiracy theories? There's so many conspiracy theories out there right now. What is your your opinion on conspiracy theories? Well, if we're talking about this, this let's divide it into two halves. Okay, yep. there's the Loch Ness, Loch Ness, Loch Ness monster, Bigfoot, all yep. of those sort of kind of creature based ones, and then there's you know the political heavy stuff. So let's yep. leave the political heavy stuff to one side. When it comes to the Loch Ness Monster, the story of Atlantis, uh, Bigfoot, yep. no, I, I think largely they are pranksters that, that, you know, got ahead of the pack early on and therefore began this thing. But I think it speaks more to our need as humans to create or, perp you know, perpetrate uh, or keep going the idea that these fantastical, bizarre things exist. I think it's more... It's so like Nietzsche said, God create, uh, man created God. I think we create Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster so that we have some wonderment in the world when the truth is the world's pretty scientific. Anything you want to know the answer to, there's normally a scientific answer. And is there a Bigfoot? Unlikely, unlikely, unless we count Donald Trump strategically <laughs> shaven. He could be. Yeah, I'm, not so sure. I'm not so sure. But, well, but we won't see him again. No, we won't see him for a while, <laughs> except in Scotland, where the Loch Ness Monster is, because he's got a golf course up there. If they let him in, that's where you'll find him. If, if he turns up and we start seeing sightings of the Loch Ness Monster, great monster, early at my golf club, come and see him, <laughs> 20 bucks to see the Loch Ness Monster. That, honestly, that sounds like a joke, might actually happen, because yeah, he's been banned well, from all the golf tournaments. He might bring back the Loch Ness Monster. So if that happens soon, just, just register that I suggested this may happen. Yeah, it's been a strange 12 months, so I suppose anything can and will happen in 2021 and 2022. Now, before I, I let you go, I do know that one of your latest roles was in The Magicians, 
which I know is yes. just coming up now on uh, Netflix in North America. We haven't gotten it here in Europe yet, so I'm watching out for it all the time, Sean. I'm dying to see it. Uh, tell me a little bit about you. I think it comes uh, in. Tell me a little bit about you in The Magicians and what role you play and... Do you know what? Bizarrely, I played two roles, which is a... I've never done that before. I mean, once upon a time, I played two versions of Robin Hood, but I've never played two characters in a show for obvious reasons. You get another actor, but I was cast to do just... I think it was just one scene or... One large scene or two small scenes as a, as a big prosthetic pig who's, who's, who is a typical, an actual chauvinist pig, but he's very anachronistic. He's from, he's sort of almost from the 18th century. So he, he, it's not that he means to be rude, but he just believes in the way that culture was then, that women were second-class citizens and weren't intelligent. So just incredibly rude and, and chauvinistic and all of that. And I had such an extraordinary experience doing it. The writing was some of the best writing I've got to deliver in a while. And consequently had an enormous amount of fun with it. And because I was unrecognizable, the production who I kind of got on well with said, we have another role coming up, would you like to play it? But we won't tell you anything about it. But I was having such fun with them. I said, sure, whatever you want me to do, I'll play it. I, I just love working with you. And it turned out to be the villain for the whole season. And it was the wow. Dark King who was magic and could summon the dead and do all this sort of weird stuff. Uh, who was 300 years old, gay and deeply disturbed. And I was like, that's a pretty interesting uh, uh, sort of you. bullet list of, <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's so up my street, it's me. And so I ended up playing both of these characters sort of simultaneously on the show and just having the best time of my life. I, the actors on it are phenomenal. The writers are just extraordinary. It's got a real cult following this show. And when I started watching it, I was like, oh, I get it. This is a really smart, uh, very kind of, it's almost like Harry Potter grown up. There's sex and drugs and violence. And it just the special effects are fantastic. I mean, I don't know how they do it on the budget they've got, but it was a really wonderful show. And so I'm, I was really delighted to be a part of it. Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I did see the prosthetics they put on you up on your Instagram page. How long did that take to put on? It took about four and a half hours to put on. And then it involved a lot of being very still because my body couldn't breathe out other than my mouth. My skin couldn't breathe. So you just sweat. Yeah. like literally buckets and buckets of sweat. It was pretty gross. Um, but um, it was so worth it because I'd never had that experience as an actor where you remove your physicality because we are bound by how we look or what we weigh or how tall we are. And in this, I completely st stepped out of myself and I couldn't, once I was in that makeup, I couldn't stop being him, even off camera. I was enjoying the <laughs> feeling of I can say or do almost anything and kind of get away with it. It was just incredibly liberating. So I'd never had that experience as an actor before and it really opened my eyes to, oh, wow, if we, if we lose ourselves completely, it allows us to step into another area of our creativity, which I found really, really interesting and, and quite eye-opening. You see, so you technically were method acting when you got into that character, you see? So this Yeah, is to some degree I was, yeah. So here's the thing, to wrap it up, Sean, I want to try something. I've got a blackboard here. You can see it here. Now, Sean, I want everybody to know we haven't set anything up. You have no idea what's about to take place, correct? No. All right. Is, look no, at me. is this a numbers thing? What is this? Is it? Okay. No, no, because I did a numbers thing on you way back when, a couple of years ago. But this is nothing to do with numbers. This is to do with words. I'm going to say a single word to you. Okay. I'm going to say a word to you. All right. And then just follow my instructions. So my word to you is snowballs now in your mind i want you to think of a word that has nothing to do with snowballs think about a word there's nothing to do with snowballs and now change your mind to a different word and now change your mind again to another word and now stop and lock that word in mind whatever that word is don't change your mind focus on that word look at me don't say anything just think of what the first letter is z y x w v u t s r k p s the first letter is an s is that correct Yes. <laughs> okay. Don't Did I do something? Just was I, I, was I like... Yeah, I'm looking for the tells. In my peripheral vision, I am looking at you. Look at me. Focus on all the different letters and imagine that they all just spread out, almost like that they're balloons flying across the sea over there. And see all of the different letters on the balloons. And now imagine all of the balloons popping in the sky as you, you go letter by letter. Look, good. Look at me. I'm just going to look at you again. Okay. There we go. 
Okay, so I have committed myself. I've written something down on the board. I'll keep it in full view. I'll stand back so people can see that it's right there. Okay, Sean, for the first time, name out loud. What word were you thinking of? My final choice. Yeah. My final choice, not the first thing. My final choice was spaceship. Spaceship. Starship. Almost starship. the exact. Starship. Sorry, I meant to say starship. I don't know oh, why I said spaceship. Oh, you're actually the starship? I actually had starship in my head. <laughs> I actually had starship in my head. That's well, so Well, starship bizarre. and spaceship are pretty much the exact same thing How anyway. You, even when I said it wrong, that's bizarre that you actually got the right one in my head and my mouth got it wrong. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's free. So listen, uh, to finish this up, I'll be asking everybody the same question every single week. Finish this sentence. To finish this segment, Sean McGuire, I want you to say magic is, and then finish in your own words. Magic is all around us. On that note, we're going to leave it right there. Sean McGuire, thank you so much. And I can't wait to have one of those rums with you down the line. See you soon, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Miss you, buddy. Lots of love. See you, mate. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye.